happy Monday, everybody. Happy post-Mother's Day, and I hope that all you mothers out there and the fathers that are playing the role of mother had a great day yesterday. I had a good day yesterday. I had got some gift cards from the boys, and Chef ended up taking me to Olive Garden, and we just did the curbside pickup, but we had a nice dinner a nice dessert and then we went to Aldi and Walmart and did our usual came home and rested up early I can't let you go, baby. so today it's been a typical Monday today it's been I'm on laundry load number three uh, the chef is taking care of some things outside and one of the things that he's taking care of outside is the pool it's not been warm enough here to think too much about the pool, but our near forecast is it's going to be improving. So anyway, it got me to thinking, uh, you know, a couple of days ago too, uh, what's one of the things that we like to have when we're poolside? We like to have pina coladas when we're poolside. So what I'm going to make today is I'm going to make my pina colada cake. Now there's a lot of pina colada cakes out there that may look better than mine or have more ingredients than mine. But I've had a couple of other pina colada cakes and to be honest with you, and I'm not tooting my own horn, I'm really not, but I like my cake better. It's easier to make, it doesn't require as many ingredients, but you have that same great taste. Because what's the things that you wanna taste when you have a pina colada? You want the coconut flavor, you want the pineapple flavor, and you want a little bit of rum. Now, mind you, I'm not going to be using real alcohol in my cake. I don't use a lot of real alcohol when I'm doing my baking because even though a lot of it cooks off, sometimes you still get that alcohol flavor, and I just don't like that. Um, I do like the rum flavor a little bit. You know, one of my favorite lifesavers ever was the butter rum. And to me, when you use a rum extract, that's the flavor you're getting is the butter rum lifesaver flavor that a lot of us grew to love when we were growing up. So anyway, um, what we're going to need for this cake right here is you're just going to need a classic white cake mix. Yes, we're going to use a boxed cake, so I have my classic white, just a Duncan Hines cake mix. You're also going to need um, some coconut. Now we're going to toast up our coconut. So in this bag right here, I just have some sweetened coconut flakes. You can leave it plain if you'd like, but I like the flavor of toasted coconut. It just brings out that coconut flavor a lot more to me. We will use a little bit of plain, but most is going to be the toasted coconut. And I'll show you how to toast it. It's very simple. And we're going to need about a half a cup of pineapple juice, which I have a can of pineapple tidbits over here, because we're going to use some of the tidbits as well. Um, you know, just your regular stuff that you would use in your cake mix. We're going to use uh, four eggs, our oil, our water. And to the cake mix, I'm also going to be adding a teaspoon of rum extract, which I have right here. This is my rum extract. I'm also going to be using a teaspoon of coconut extract, which is about all I have left because we use a lot of coconut extract in the summertime. Um, that's pretty much all we're going to be needing besides I have a tub of white frosting. You can use the vanilla if you want. But I'm going to be flavoring this anyway, so I just buy the white. Um, so, what do you say we get started on making this cake? Because like I said, it's very simple compared to many, but has just as great a flavor, if not better. But I'll let you guys decide. We'll make this cake, have a look at it, and then decide whether you guys think you'd like it or not. Anyway, I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to toast up some coconut. Now, the more coconut, the more you like coconut, the more you want to toast up or add to this. I'm going to do about a cup and a half of coconut. I'm going to use three quarters of it in my cake mix and I'm going to save the other three quarters for 
decoration on top of the cake. So I've got my cookie sheet here. I'm just going to spread me some coconut out. Sometimes it's just easier to do it by hand. You know what? I might toast up a little extra because I like the flavor of... Sometimes I just like to eat coconut because it's really good. Makes you think of summer. To me, it's like smelling banana boat, suntan lotion, and coconut, and pineapple. And you can pretend you're in Hawaii, right? Sometimes we have to use our imagination. So I'm just going to spread this out in a thin layer on my cookie sheet. And I'm going to put this in the oven. This is the first thing we're going to do. Again, I have my oven on 350 degrees. And I'm going to toast it for anywhere between 7 and 10 minutes. And I'm going to take my spatula and I'm going to, you know, stir it around and flip it around every couple of minutes. So let me get this started first. Okay, and there's my coconut after eight minutes, and it's totally up to you how much you want to toast your coconut. If you want it to be darker than this, then you can leave it in a little bit longer. Just keep an eye on it. But this was eight minutes, and this is perfect for me. This is exactly the way that I like it. So I'm going to get this set over on the other side, and we'll get started on our cake mix. Okay, I transferred half of my toasted coconut to the bowl. Because that's what I'm going to be adding to the cake mix. And now we're going to get started on the actual cake mix itself. So I have my butter spray to put in my 9 by 13 pan. We're not doing a layer cake. We're just doing a regular 13 by 9 cake. So it's going to be cut into pieces anyway. So, um, And like I said, we're going to be doing a, we're doing a poke cake. So... I'm going to dump in my all-white cake mix. And, all right. In here, I have a half a cup of water. So I'm going to dump that in. I've got three quarters of a cup of toasted coconut. I'm going to dump that in. Now I need a half a cup of pineapple juice. So I'm just going to... You guys can see everything here. I'm going to open up my pineapple just enough where I can get some liquid out. All right, get my half cup measuring cup. Sorry about my arms, guys, but I'm just gonna pour out a half a cup of pineapple juice out of our can here. All right, and we're going to dump that in. What's not better than a little bit of pineapple and a little bit of coconut and a little bit of rum? Right, guys? I don't see anything wrong with that myself. <laughs> okay, now what I want to do is I want to add a teaspoon of rum. Again, this is my rum extract. I'm just going to use the cap because that's usually about a teaspoon. Whoops. All right. Got a teaspoon of rum extract going in. And, oh, it smells so good. It smells like those butter rum lifesavers. It does. And I have about a teaspoon of coconut extract left. So I'm putting that in also. And I need to put that on my list so I can be sure to get some more. Okay, so we've got our toasted coconut, our rum extract, our coconut extract, our half a cup of water. And our half a cup of pineapple juice in here. Now what I want to do is I want to put four egg whites in. So I'm going to crack these. And you can do these separately in a bowl if you'd like. But I just do them like this. If you have a problem with separating them, then I would do it separately. Whoa! Like that one. A little yolk tried to get away from me. All right, maybe penguins should have done it separately, huh? <laughs> I was just trying to be too cheap. I was trying to get every last bit of that egg white that I could get. Okay, get our next egg white in here. Woo, yes, ma'am. So anyway, like I said, I hope everybody had a great day yesterday. I hope you had a great start to the week. 
going to be pool time before long. I just don't know, though. This weather has just been unlike any that I think I've seen in a very long time. It's just not normal, which Indiana is not a normal state anyway, but it just seems like it's just been really crazy. Now, I will say the cake mix does call for three egg whites, but we're using four. That's the only um, change besides adding the half a cup of pineapple juice that I'm making to this. Again, like I always do, I will leave my recipe, my ingredients in the description box below so you guys can follow along with what I use. All right, there we go. We've got that in. Let me go wash my hands and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Got my hands all washed up. Now I've got my tablespoon here. I'm just going to grab about a third of a can of my pineapple tidbits and dumping that into my cake mix. I think that ought to be plenty right there. Okay, we're going to set this off to the side because we're going to use a little bit more of that juice. And I'm just going to take about a quarter of a cup of plain coconut and dump this in here. All right. And that should be it for our coconut. That's all we're going to need for that. And the last thing that we need to put in is a third cup of oil. I'm using canola oil. You can use canola oil, vegetable oil, whatever kind you prefer. I'm going to dump in a third cup of oil. And we're going to get to mixing. I am not going to use my hand, mix my hand mixer for this. I'm just going to use my whisk. You can use your hand mixer if you want a more fluffier cake. I would recommend it. But we're just doing things penguin style today. And we're just going to mix this up by hand. So this is what it looks like in the bowl right now. I'm just going to give this a good mix for a little bit. And when I'm done, I'll be back with you. Okay, ladies, and we are back. I got my mess semi-cleaned up. Chef came in. Say hi, Chef. Hi, Chef. <laughs> hi, Tia. All right, I'm just going to lightly spray my 13 by 9 pan. And just so you ladies know, she's a big liar because the mess is standing right here in front of her and she didn't clean me up. <laughs> He's not a mess. Yes, I am. No, he gave me a great Mother's Day. We had a nice dinner and shopping and... He's getting into the cookie stash now, so if you hear that, he's, he's, over. he's been out working his little tail feathers off. Okay, so we're going to take our cake mix here and dump it into our 13 by 9 pan. You can see all that coconut and pineapple. You can smell the rum. You can smell the coconut. They need handles on these. Hi there, woman. You need to put some handles on all of your heavy mixing bowls. Because if our hands aren't big enough to hold them, we're going to drop the stuff into the the cake pan. That's your plan. You drop them and you got to buy more bowls. <laughs> I don't want to buy more bowls. That's your plan. I only have so much room. Oh, that's their plan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You buy a set of bowls and you drop and break one, you gotta buy another whole set to replace it. Well, yeah, that might be their plan, but that's not my plan because I don't have that much cabinet space. I mean, I've got a lot of cabinet space, but not to buy tons of bowls. Okay, I think we got just about all of that in here. Now I'm gonna put this in the oven and I'm gonna bake it like we would any other cake mix. According to the package directions, we're gonna keep an eye on it. And we will know that it's done when we insert a toothpick into the center and it comes out clean. So I'm figuring probably anywhere between 25 and 35 minutes. I will let you guys know exactly how long it took me to bake this. And then as soon as it gets close to being done or right after it's done, we're going to go ahead and make the stuff that we're going to pour into the holes of this. We'll probably do that while the cake's cooling just a tad. All right, let me get this in the oven and we'll be back. Okay, while we're waiting on the cake to get done, 
Um, I just wanted to talk about what we're going to pour into the holes when our cake is ready for it. So I've got my small saucepan here. And when I'm ready, I'm going to dump in my half a cup of pineapple juice that I reserved from the can. I did reserve a half a cup that went into the cake mix, and then I took another half a cup, and that's what's in this right here. We're going to put this in the pan along with a half a cup of sugar. We're going to stir it. We're going to put it on the burner, and we're going to bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're going to shut it off. That's what we're going to be pouring over the top of our cake. So I'm going to set that out of the way, and I'm going to grab my little tub of white frosting. And like I said, you can grab the vanilla. I just grabbed the white because we're going to be adding flavor to it. So I've got my trusty cake spatula and I'm just going to just kind of mix this up a little bit in here. You can dump it into a separate bowl and do it that way if you want to. You just make yourself more dishes. We don't want more dishes. <laughs> okay. I am going to now that I'm getting ready to... Um, Mix up the stuff for the cake mix to ice the top. I've got my rum extract, and I'm going to take a teaspoon of that. And I'm going to dump it into our frosting. Trust me, ladies and gents, this is really, really good. I would not steer you wrong, stir you wrong, steer you wrong. <laughs> so we're just going to mix that rum extract up into our, right, into our white frosting. And again, it just smells so, so good. Love, love, love the smell of rum. Not a big alcohol drinker. I do like a pina colada if it's light on the alcohol. But I'm more into the pina colada for the coconut and the pineapple. Malibu rum is not terrible. So that's what we use when we make our pina coladas. All right, so we just got this stirred up. So we're just getting one step ahead. So we'll already have this ready when the cake is ready to be frosted. All right. So we've just got this done. And I'm going to go ahead and just put the lid back on it and let it sit until we're ready for it. That way I can lick the spatula and I can, you know, the cook's got a taste test, right? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's very good. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left on the cake. When it gets done, I'll show you what it looks like at that point, and then we'll get ready to do our um, pineapple sugar mixture for the cake. Hey, guys. While we're waiting on the cake to get done, I just wanted to show you a couple of things. We got at all these yesterday. That's really good. I've never seen these before. It's the Casa Mamita. Queso fundido, cheese and chorizo flavored wavy potato chips. And these are so, so good. I've never seen these before. We saw them at Aldi's yesterday. So, obviously we bought a bag because they just look irresistible. And then the chef found these. If you guys can see these. They're chocolate truffle hearts. And these are so good, y'all. It says imported from Germany. And on the back, it tells you what flavors there are. You get two of each flavor. There's Cafe Ole, Raspberry Marscapone, if you can see that. Um, chocolate Mousse, it says Mousse Chocolat. Bourbon Vanilla, and Strawberry Rhubarb. Now, you guys, most of you know that Strawberry Rhubarb is the chef's favorite flavor. And he tried. He loves Strawberry Rhubarb Pie. And he got home and he cracked these open and he said that the strawberry rhubarb tastes just like strawberry rhubarb. So he was very, very pleased with that. So we have a couple of minutes left on our cake mix, but it was just fun going through all these. They have just the neatest stuff. We didn't do a haul because we do a haul all the time, but we just grabbed a few things from there. I think we only spent like $40 probably, but... They had another, I can't remember, oh, they had these chips also in taco flavor. We almost grabbed those, but we didn't. We figured one bag was plenty enough. And, uh, sorry. Chewing the tip. 
We got some tomatoes and green chilies. Just some stuff like that. And we also saw this, which the chef loved it because of the jar. If you can see this, it's a big tutti fruity. Got a, large, a lot of hard candies in it. Uh, lemon, orange, raspberry, grape, and apple flavored hard candies. So, he just really, he wanted the jar more than anything else. So, I don't know when he'll ever open that because we're going to be getting back on our diet real soon. Yeah, yeah, I know we keep saying that. We haven't done it yet, but we will. Trust me, we will. We did buy some keto stuff there yesterday, too. Okay. Cake has one minute on it left. So, I'm going to get ready to check it. And if it's done, then I'll show you. Okay, there is the cake. It took 25 minutes. And I checked it, and it's done. So, now we're going to get ready to do the top. Okay, I've got my little saucepan here. I'm going to dump in my half a cup of pineapple juice. Get that in there. And then we're just going to do a half a cup of sugar with this. Sorry about my arm, guys. I've got my arm in the way. It's almost a half. There we go. A half a cup of sugar. I'm just going to stir this around and we're going to put this on the stove and we're just going to bring it to a boil. So I'm not going to really show you guys because I think you know what I'm talking about with this. But like I said, we're just going to stir it, bring it to a boil, and once it comes to a boil, we're going to shut it off. So you just want to keep an eye on it and keep stirring it. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, we got our pineapple syrup done, which is basically what we were doing. That's in the pan here. We just wanted to make sure that we had all the sugar dissolved. So now I'm just going to take a fork and I'm going to go through and I'm just going to poke holes everywhere. All through the cake. Poke, poke, poke. You can use a skewer if you want to use a skewer for this. Anything you want to. You can use a knife. It doesn't have to be anything particular. You just want to poke some fine holes all through the cake. You don't want to take a big end of a big wooden spoon and do this like you would if you're using pudding or something. But, I mean, you certainly can if you'd rather. You can um, make some coconut pudding and dump that into here. But to me, it's just not the same. Mm -mm -mm. That cake sure tastes good, though. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to take our syrup, give it a good stir again. And we're just going to pour this right over the top of our cake. Get all that pineapple syrup down into there, along the edges. Yum, yum, guys. This is so good. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. All right. So we've got all of our pineapple syrup in there now. What we're going to do is we're just going to let this sit and cool for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to stick it in the refrigerator. I'm only going to leave it in the refrigerator long enough for it to just cool a little bit where it's safe enough to go ahead and ice it. And then once that's done and we're ready, then we're going to bring it out, and I'll show you what we do. Okay, guys, we're back. I've had the cake in the refrigerator for probably about an hour. So we're going to take our rum frosting that we made earlier and just give it a stir. And we're just going to plop it out all over the cake. And we're going to ice this cake up. And I can already tell you that it smells like a pina colada. So this, I mean, this is great to have if you have a swimming pool and you have a pool party, cookout, anything like that, or just to make it just because it's summer, you know, one of those fun cakes to make. And I'll show you when I'm done how we're going to present it when you cut a piece and give it to somebody. But first we're going to ice it up. my 
spatula and just going across and how I do when I do my meringue sometimes just to make it look a little decorative. Just touch and go is all I'm doing. Just tapping. Just kind of makes it so it's not so blah, you know. Tap and tap, tap. So the chef came in a while ago. He said, I need a band-aid, I need a band-aid. He was out burning sticks and stuff and ran a stick into it, the top of his hand. So I had to play nurse for a minute. <laughs> Seen him back on his merry way. Men are so cute when they get injured. So funny. So if you guys can see that, what I did to the top of it. Now I'm going to take that coconut that I saved. And we're just going to go all along the top. And we're going to dust it with this toasted coconut. I like it when it's toasted. Because it gives it that little crispy texture to it. Not to mention it brings out a little bit more of the coconut flavor. Makes it a little sweeter. Not as if the cake's not sweet enough, you know. But what's a cake without sweetness? Wouldn't be a cake then, would it? Isn't that looking so cute? And then I'll show you exactly how we... I'll show you how we serve this cake up. Okay, guys, and there you have it. There is our version of a Hawaiian pina colada party cake with coconut, pineapple, a little dollop of cream on top, and, of course, a cherry. And what's a pina colada without an umbrella? Right, guys? So that is our cake. We hope you enjoy it. We hope you have a chance to make it. And share it with your family and friends. So, we will see you, right? Yeah. Chef is exhausted. So, we will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.